I grew up on the game going to college doubleheaders in the old Madison Square Garden at 50th and 8th Avenue every Thursday night. Uh, my first hero was Kenny Hawkins. I followed him when he was a senior at Boys High from playground to playground. And I just grew up with the game. And I have been around it forever. I'm older than dirt. And the only thing I have to, I'm older than dirt and I've seen a lot of basketball, probably too, more, too many games to brag about. And uh, I, I love the game. Do you have any uh, cool stories of your time of uh, um, covering basketball? Well, the, the most amazing thing I ever saw in a basketball court, I saw it when I was 12 years old. This was August 8th, 1959, at PS, at 127, PS 127 Playground in East Elmhurst in Queens. It was the annual New York City versus Philadelphia series. Philly would bring a team up and play in junior high school, high school, college, and the pros. And in 59, Will Chamberlain, who had left Kansas the year before, didn't want to go back for a senior year. He signed the biggest contract at that time in the history of professional basketball, $65,000 to tour the world with the Globetrotters. The most anticipated matchup in the history of the NBA was going to take place November 9, 1959 at Boston Garden when Chamberlain was going to come into the league and play against Bill Russell. Sport Magazine, which at the time was much bigger than Sports Illustrated, had a big article on it. Tickets was, I think the attendance was something like 13909 was sold out six months in advance. Well, the summer before, he's coming up to play with Philadelphia against New York City in this little court. It was a court enclosed by a cage, it's maybe 70, 75 feet long. There's no 94 or even 84 feet. And there were 1,200 portable bleachers. Cecil Watkins from the Parks Department rented them and set them up. And he's going to play before he goes into the NBA. And he goes, Wilt shows up, he plays with his low trotter shorts with the vertical stripes, and he plays with a little denim hat like J.J. Walker wore in good times later on. You know, 15 years later, or 20 years later, the, the TV series. And the refs aren't going to say, Wilt, you got to take the hat off because he might walk off the court. Well, this is before you had alternate possession. If there was a hell ball, you jump it at the nearest jump circle. So they've already played the junior high school, the high school, and the college game. And now they're playing in the pro game. And Will Chamberlain, 7-1, is tied up by Chink Gaines. Richie Chink Gaines, who was a great player at Seton Hall, got out in 57. He was the uncle of Sonata Gaines, who played at Georgia, played for the Nets, for Indiana, for Utah Jazz, plays overseas now. There's a hell ball. He's 6-1 and a ball, and Chamberlain, 7-1. So they go to the nearest jump circle, which is the foul line, and they toss the ball up, and Wilt tips it in the basket, control, control taps it on his palm, tips back then it counted. Now it's got to either touch the floor or another player. It would be a violation now, but back then it counted. It was a two-point field goal. Didn't even, hit the, didn't even hit the rim, went straight through the net. That's how strong he was, 7-1 against 6-1. Tips it in from the foul line. 30 seconds later, there's a thunderstorm. There's no indoor, there's no rain sign. 1,200 people scatter for cover. It ends the, the game in the second quarter. It's as if God says, I've seen it all. Nothing can top this. I'm ending it right now. To this day, that's the most amazing thing I've ever seen on a basketball court.